automotive systems. Um, just like uh, uh, the aerospace industry, the autom automotive industry too is interested in uh, designing these um, high performance uh, systems uh, and make decisions in the presence of uh, a lot of changes either in the environment or in the physics of the automobile or in the way in which the driver interacts with the automobile, etc. Um, so we've been uh, working on a number of adaptive concepts um, uh, of interest, either in the powertrain itself, and now we're also trying to, to figure out um, uh, these concepts in the context of the driver interacting with the infrastructure. Um, so the, when it comes to the first one, so, uh, what happens is that, as you can imagine, um, as you design uh, these uh, control systems, and in an automotive, uh, in an automobile, there are a, thousands of such loops uh, because you have to manage the uh, speed, you have to manage the air fuel ratio, you have to uh, manage the um, the exhaust. I mean, there are a variety of of signals that have to be monitored and regulated. Um, so. As you start designing these loops, then it, the software that is inherent in the vehicle becomes extremely complex and there are several um, gains that have to be calibrated and this becomes an extraordinarily intensive um, uh, process and there's a lot of uh, person hours that go into the, into the uh, calibration of these gains. So the question is, is it possible to provide certain intelligence to these loops and have them self-calibrate themselves? And that basically is the kind of things that we looked into. So how do you self-tune these algorithms? How do you make these algorithms adaptive so that these gains can be just, you know, every car as it comes down the assembly line might be different and therefore these self-tuning capabilities essentially uh, accommodate the fact that there is a variation from one vehicle car to the other and have provide the same and, and have them uh, exhibit the same performance at the end by, in, by virtue of the self-calibration. So we've looked at some of those things and we've uh, designed uh, certain uh, control loops for the air fuel ratio and for idle speed and in all these cases this, these ad adaptive ability seems to give it a much better performance and we worked with Ford in the past on this and thing and, and uh, um, the, through the uh, uh, Ford MIT uh, alliance and um, uh, they've been very uh, satisfied with some of the The challenge now that, that we are looking at and which is something that we are very excited about is that the, the whole automotive industry the DNA is changing. The, um, the car that your grandfather drove is very different from the car that you drive, which would be very different from the car that the, your, your children and their children would drive. And the main part that is changing is really the electronics. So what used to be a very physical entity is becoming a cyber physical entity. So this transition from a physical system, control of a physical system to control of a cyber physical system is really what uh, is emerging and that is a new paradigm and so while we will continue to design these, this whole controller which is collecting information and making decisions, the process of what information is that we collect will now in, uh, be expanded to address not only this mechanical system, this electromechanical energy conversion entity to all of the um, implementation components that sits in the car. Like for instance, there are these microprocessors, there are these embedded systems that essentially provide these functionalities. And so these, what are known as electronic control units are increasing in number. Right now, I would say probably there are about 80 to 100 in a car. So, and these ECUs manage different functionalities of the car. It could be controlling their speed, it could be controlling different engine functions, it could be presumably performing some diagnostics. So, you want to make sure that in the process of do, collecting your information and decision making, that you also accommodate the fact that these functionalities are basically embedded in these processors. And therefore, you need to make sure that um, you accommodate those computer um, engineering or the computer science concepts, the, the implementation co aspects of it also into your control design. 
And so we are looking into these aspects like core design of not only a controller, but also the embedded platform. And so which means that we are entering realms in which mechanical engineering, control engineering, and computer science intersect. And so we want to figure out how messages that are sent, which have this information of, you know, and also the decision making, are suitably handled and are synergistically handled by these ECUs. So that's some of the things that we're looking at right now. The design of the, these, uh, these ECUs certainly has to accommodate those things that you have redundancies, you have these safety nets, and you have these you know, failure safe modes, et cetera, et cetera. Et cetera. So all of those things are, ha are, are part and parcel of the overall design. So that has to be incorporated. All we are saying is that while we make sure that as you design these controls, which, uh, controllers, which come from the top layer and flows through these different layers, that in the process of going through these different transformations saying, okay, I want this high level functionality. So then that needs to be basically implemented using these components. And then that goes through another transformation and you go, it finally flows, it trickles down into these microprocessors. So in the process of doing all of those transformations, you wanna make sure that the original goal of making certain decisions and, and therefore uh, uh, ensuring a certain performance is not lost. And so that basically is what, what is, is what we are looking at right now, and this all comes under the rubric of uh, cyber physical physical systems, and that's something that we are very much involved in. And you know, as you can imagine, as there are new um, advances, like for instance, there is a lot of uh, discussion going on about multi-core processors and using these multi-core processors to perform the computation. So you want to make sure that these control designs are um, uh, capable of accommodating those um, developments and uh, naturally lend themselves into utilizing you know, every bit of advantage that you can get using those multi-core processing architectures. And that's something that we're looking at right now. So and again, you know, any automotive industry would be interested in, in this. And you know, we've been talking to, to, to companies like Toyota and so on.